And when I fish this fell on the floor, I felt it and it wasn't a nice feeling. My goodness. Right into the school we go and boop. Oh no, not good. Right here, we have ourselves a bagel, nice soft bread. And we're gonna start balling this stuff up into little teeny teeny little balls just like that and get it on the end of our hook right here. Today we are inside of my aviary and we have to save a bunch of colorful fish behind me inside of that pond. So we're gonna get into it right now, but the way we're gonna do that is we have a fishing rod and we're gonna have to try to catch these fish very carefully so that we don't catch our colorful fish that are living inside of there. You guys are probably asking why we need to catch these fish. Well, they are taking over my aviary pond and there's not enough predators that live inside of this pond to eat the fish that I don't want to be in here. So before we get our rod and reel and ready to go to catch these fish, we're gonna throw you in to something really cool, a pond vacuum that we used to clean our ponds. As you guys know, we have a ton of ponds here on the ranch that get dirty all the time. But this one, especially in front of the house, gets really dirty because it's just pretty much a dog drinking bowl and a dog pond. All the dogs go inside of it and swim and do all kinds of crazy things in it and keep it really, really dirty. But luckily we got this pond vacuum cleaner from Vever. So this thing is a perfect vacuum. It has a really, really strong motor with it, and it is perfect to pick up all of the mess that the animals leave inside of our pond. All right, so this vacuum cleaner comes with a bunch of stuff. It has four different nozzles right here, so you can get to all the little crevices that you need to reach inside of your pond. It also has a 15-foot cord so that you guys can put it to your plug-in from a far extent to the pond. It also has four plug-ins right here. Put these guys like this, and it gives you an extra reach into your pond. And also, it has your filter pad right here that goes on the inside so it grabs all your debris and it doesn't get stuck down below. Also has four wheels so that the thing will roll around the vacuum cleaner and it also has a bag for your filter. We got everything plugged in. It looks very easy to use. We're gonna plug this piece in right here for this suction part. The reason why I decided to use that one instead of this one for this pond is just the way this pond is built. Um, but we're gonna put it on right quick. Here we go. Turn this bad boy on, and we're going to the bottom. Oh my goodness, it's sucking. So we're just sucking the bottom of the pond all up, getting all the gunk going. And then this part should be your your exit. You can see all the gunk in there. It's grabbing everything up right now. And I think that's the discharge. The discharge will go over there, fill this up, and go right back in. We have the pad that's over here and that pad is grabbing all of the gunk that's inside of here. So now we put the other nozzle on and this one's perfect to get into all the crevices of the rock inside of this pond. So we're gonna turn this bad boy on and here we go. And we're getting into all the little cracks to make sure we get all of the gunk. All right, so this one has a nice flat bottom. It has bristles on the bottom and this one's gonna suck the bottom just like a big old sucker fish. So here we go. Perfect, just like that. Getting everything on the bottom of those rocks. So I like this one the best because it's nice and flat on the bottom and this one skims the top of the rocks nice and perfectly without touching the fish. So here we go. Getting everything on all the rocks perfectly, nice and smooth. And as soon as you turn it off, the water comes back out to the exhaust area right here. Or the, and not the exhaust, but the discharge hose and grabs all your gunk inside of here so it doesn't go right back. We grabbed a bunch of different broken grass down here after they cut the grass here in front of the pond. Check all that stuff out, crazy. So make sure you guys are paying attention that your hose is always staying flat so you guys have a nice smooth cleaning. So you guys can see the rocks in the back, they're full of allergy. Now look at the other rocks. Now look how well this rock is all cleaned up and looks like a rock. So what are you guys waiting for? Make sure you guys go get yourself one of these pond vacuum cleaners by clicking the link down below and don't forget to use my code. Vever Sale 5 for 5% discount with all the products on the Vever website. You guys are gonna love this pond vacuum cleaner. It is absolutely amazing and it makes your pond sparkly clean. So before we set up our rod and reel and start catching these fish, it is summertime here on the ranch. And when it's summertime, all of our black wood turtles are starting to lay eggs. And if you guys haven't been watching videos from back then, we collect a lot of eggs inside of this aviary. So we're gonna walk around the whole entire thing and see if we can find some eggs first for you guys. So as you can see, with all this summer rain, everything is growing like crazy. So we're gonna have to do a lot of cutbacks. We do cutbacks inside of this aviary. I swear, two or three times a month because the rain is just insane. Poncho and Pinky are behind us, they're on the way. 
Here comes Pancho. Pancho! Always in everyone's videos, well, in our faces and all that. All right, first off, we have this spot right here, so check this out. All right, come on over the top, come over the top. Oh, 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 oh. We have a normal temple turtle right here. See that? Just hanging out. And then right next to him, we have a nice big black turtle like oh 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 we got another one here we go and it's season right now so they just are laying everywhere all these high dry oh my god another one all these high dry areas oh that's a bad one unfortunately we got a little divot right there how many might... do they lay so cassandra that's a good question cassandra just asked so the black wood turtles are the biggest species of rhino clemmies and these guys gonna actually lay up to six eggs that i've collected here on the ranch i'm not sure if that's the record number or not but that's what i found in the ranch so having a real big giant natural enclosure like this, it is sometimes very hard to try to find all the eggs. So unfortunately we don't collect them all, but the way we made this enclosure so no animals are able to escape, we have it layered over the top with this waterfowl netting. They obviously can't get through this because they're not gonna climb that high. But then we have critter friends that's one inch thick. And then behind that, you see we have a red brand horse mesh behind that as well for double protection so nothing can get through. The one inch is perfect size for the black wood turtle hatchlings. They cannot fit through that mesh whatsoever. So we don't have to worry about anything. Let me collect these eggs before I forget about them. Well, we wanna kinda of pick them up the way you found them because if you don't, if they're already growing inside of these eggs, we can disturb them and we could kill the little babies. We wouldn't want that to happen. We're gonna do a quick little walkthrough. If we see any movement or anything in the ground, we're gonna collect them all up and grab them. They really, really blend themselves in though, inside of like the corners and everything. Yeah, it did. <laughs> All right, let's see, let's see. It's real thick, watch out, you guys. The reason why I haven't cut this one back is as you guys can see, we have some guavas growing inside of our aviary as well. We have a lot of fruit trees that are inside of here and different types of trees that are inside of our aviary so that the birds can naturally forage and live their best life. And you guys can see my eyes are not looking in the camera because I'm talking to you guys at the same time as I'm looking throughout the enclosure, trying to find more eggs. Hey, Pancho, be a good boy. It's always inside of our you know, grabbing our stuff. Keep on coming this way. We're gonna come through underneath here. And look around. Look around. Oh, we got a bunch of ducks over here. All hanging out. White cheek pintails, super wood ducks, mandarins, all sorts of different stuff. Well, I don't see anything over here and the trees that way are really, real thick. Oh, wait. Look at the rurus. Rurus and the yellow flesh is hanging out, doing their thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut across going this way why? Now I want to go through all the spread webs and all that stuff. But before we do that, you're going to see we have this weird fern looking thing right here that started growing inside the aviary, which is absolutely amazing. Another really cool thing is we have a strangler fig, a strangler vine, starting to grow all over the waterfall like crazy. You can see the, uh, the roots growing all over the rocks and just starting to become part of the waterfall, which is going to be a benefit for us because over time, all of these logs that we have inside here that are cut down, they were going to rot down eventually. That's going to grow all over the logs and become a tree and keep that waterfall all put together all the time. It's really dope. So we have our pond apple tree. But I don't want to bore you guys too much. We're going to get to the point of reason why we're here inside of the aviary. We're going to set up our fishing rod and we're going to try to catch as many fish as we can inside of this aviary. So let's do it. Right here, we have ourselves a bagel, nice soft bread. And we're gonna start balling this stuff up into little teeny, teeny little balls, just like that. And get it on the end of our hook right here. This hook is a very, very small little teeny hook. So it won't do too much damage, but we're gonna make sure we're only spotting and catching the fish that we want to catch. And that right there are these certain type of tilapias that live inside of this pond. I'm pretty sure they're called green tilapias. They're invasive fish that we've caught in inside of South Florida all around and we place them inside of our enclosed ponds. Um, they're really cool fish, but they kind of breed is really, really crazy. And there's really not a lot of things in here that eat them up. A lot of people are like, oh, the turtles and ducks and all that are going to eat them. They don't happen. So we want more cichlids. We want more of our tilapia in here and all that. So we're just going to drop it right there. Oh, we almost had one. And right there. Oh, that's not another one we wanted either. That right there was some type of like, um, I don't even know what it was. But we're going to try to get it. That one! So right there is exactly what we're trying to catch. We're gonna try to get as many as we can out of here because we had just one female that was living inside of here. And I was like calling a couple of my fishing friends. And I was like, hey, listen, 
I need one male. We put one male in here, and literally two weeks, we had millions of these guys. You can see them all swimming over the top, and they're really, really taking over this pond a lot. So if there isn't a, a predator in here to take down the population, it just, you know, they're just gonna stay really, really up there in population. So we wanna bring them down. So put it down in the comments, you guys. What species of bird can we find for the, oh, shiznits. I dropped them. What species of bird can you guys put down in the comments you think can live inside this aviary? Ow, flipper, flapjack. Pancho, don't hurt him. That can live inside of this aviary, that can eat some of the fish. Put it down in the comments. What species do you think we could put in here? Um, let me know. So we have a bucket over here. Follow me. Okay, let's take a run. We have this bucket right here ready to go with water and a brick so it doesn't fall over and we throw our fish right there. So we keep them in there, we fill them all up and then pretty much what we do is we go donate them to raw fishing so he can feed Jaws. Let's go catch some more. And when that fish just fell on the floor, I felt it and it wasn't a nice feeling. My goodness, be careful of those spikes you guys. Freaking A. Freaking, I just looked over, I see my foot all full of blood. So if you guys look closely, there are some in there with red tails and then there's some of them with no red tails. The red tails are all breeding males. So they are really, really wanting to uh, breed right now because it is summertime, the water's hot and they all wanna find females and nest. The situation is, is this pond is very big, but it's not big enough to hold all of these fish. So what happens is these guys wanna breed, they take territory in different corners of the ponds and then the African cichlids and our other tilapia will have spots to nest so then the population of those drop down and those go up. And we don't want those to go up. So that's why we're gonna be the big predator. We're gonna be the boss inside of this pond. And we're gonna protect our colorful fish that live inside of this aviary. So let's try to catch a handful more. And some of you guys are probably wondering what species of fish do we have that live inside of this aviary? Well, we have tinfoil barbs, we have bala sharks, we have African cichlids, we have these weird freaking tilapia. Let's get this big boy right there. Bam! We got that one right there. That's a big boy. And we have we said tinfoil barbs, clown loachers in here. Tilapia. We have some Florida guards. We said tilapia, and um, uh, some really cool shiners. Oh, and Salvini cichlids. All right, we're gonna be careful this time because we're gonna hold them real tight. You see these right here? When they fell on the floor, that's what got us. Oh, sorry, Pancho. Uh oh. Pancho, don't take his eyeball out. You hear Pancho? Hey, Pancho! Pancho likes to bite everything. It's super funny. All right, let's go throw this guy in the bucket. Let's catch more. Bam! So a really cool thing that's going to happen is that these fish are always going to be here. And when these fish are always here, when Cash is older, my son, he can come over here and he can fish in our own backyard and catch some awesome fish. And then we can feed our friends fish. We can even feed those to the otters we want to. If you guys want to see that in a video, put it down in the comments, you guys. It's pretty much growing our own natural fish to feed other animals here on the ranch. And if we really wanted to, just get in. We live on a farm, if you guys didn't know. Let's get in the shade. Ready? And if we really wanted to, I know you guys are gonna say this is very cruel, but we can humanely kill those fish. We could bury them around our plants and make our plants grow even faster. Or what we could do as well is we could humanely kill these fish and we could feed them to our tortoises and our turtles. They will absolutely love eating some fresh fish because naturally in the wild, where these yellowfoots come from in Peru, when the water's really, really high and the water starts dropping, there's little small ponds and canals and little streams and all different kinds of little weird little things that the fish get stuck on. So when they get stuck, the fish die, and then all the predators and the small ground creepy crawlies, turtles, and thingy mabobbers go over there and start eating all the dead stuff. So naturally, that's how these tortoises eat all different types of things. That's the reason why I placed these yellowfoots inside here because they live life. I haven't got them on footage yet, but hopefully soon you guys will be able to get some live footage of them swimming across the ponds. Because every time I have seen it, I got it on the last second and I don't pull out my phone because it's just so cool watching these animals just live their best life and doing what they want to do. If you're able to make yourself in an enclosure like this, 100% do it. But just to give you guys like a, I don't know, like a little heads up, you're going to sweat a lot. You're going to work a lot. You're going to do a lot of work if you want it to make it look nice. There's endless work inside of an enclosure like this and it's really, really fun. Let's catch a couple more fish for you guys. Right into the school we go, and boop! Oh no! Not good. It's not a bad fish. But it's okay. We're not gonna hurt him. We're not gonna hurt him. That's why we use a small, small hook. We got it out and we put it back in. Woo! 
safe, quick, and fast. We didn't want to hurt him whatsoever. That was a blue machine. We did not want to catch that thing, but he came out of the freaking cracks of the rocks and caught him. So we use a small, small little hook. We make sure we tie it really, really good, and we just grab him, catch him, and release him very fast. We don't take him out of the water. We don't want to show off this fish at all because this is our, our pet fish. We don't want to hurt him. So catch and go and go put him back in. Swimming right off, no problem with all the oxygen and live plants that live inside our aviary. Wow, that was a quick little one. And I think fought hard too. My goodness. All right, another piece of bread and let's catch another tilapia. All right, we're gonna go for this little guy right here. Right in his mouth. Oh my God, we're just like pop and go. So that's a little guy right there. It's perfect size for actually Franklin raw fishing for jaws. He could take that without a problem. So if you're seeing this, Franklin, if you want this, let me know, put it in the comments and uh, we'll keep drop it off. But if not, we'll probably just keep them for, oh my goodness, for our next video. Uh, if this video gets 5,000 likes, we'll go feed our otters some live fish. Let me know if you guys want to do that. But other than that, you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video here at Blitz Exotic Anim Ranch. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, put your post notifications on, and make sure you guys go down to the description and go check out the sponsorship so that you guys can go get yourself a pond vacuum to make your ponds go crystal clear just like this one. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody.